Hey everyone, it's Charlotte and Gabby from the Kia Hyundai channel and today's Monday and we are keeping things pretty casual with this little bonus video. Mm -hmm. Now this video came about because we saw a comment on our Hyundai Elantra hybrid video and it seemed like someone was getting pretty confused about the difference on what a hybrid is versus a plug-in hybrid and with the popularity of EVs in the electric world, questions have never been higher. Yes. <laughs> so, so I'm inserting the comments somewhere over here. That's why I'm doing that. <laughs> Give it a read. Um, essentially, it sounds like this viewer is confused between the range. So with plug-in hybrids and hybrids, obviously they're very similar. Even the mm -hmm. name itself is so similar and that aids to the confusion. Me and Charlotte are here to break it down a bit. So Charlotte, I want to start off by asking you, what's a hybrid? So that is a great question. So I think a hybrid is going to be what most people think about when they think of the word hybrid. Uh, meaning, Toyota Prius. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be, it's two items working in conjunction with another, basically. Mm -hmm. So with a hybrid or hybrid electric vehicle, which is that HEV acronym that we know and love so much, you're going to have a regular gasoline ICE, so internal combustion engine, working in conjunction with an electric motor. And what these are going to do is they're going to work together, and basically that's going to be what creates power, what propels the vehicle forward. Now, of course, we're going to get into the world of regenerative braking. If that sounds like a big term to you, don't let it scare you at all. Uh, but basically, what it is is as you are slowing down or braking in your hybrid vehicle, electric vehicle, plug-in hybrid vehicle, it's going to put a little bit more of that uh, energy into a battery uh, to give you a little bit more of that electric power when you are coming from an acceleration from a stop. So in your basic, most basic terms, that is what your hybrid is going to look like. But what about your plug-in hybrid? So I just want to clarify things. It charges itself, essentially. It charges itself. Yes, There, there's your key element. Perfect. Especially when we're talking about plug-in hybrids versus hybrids. And with that, I'm going to gently segue into plug-in hybrids. So essentially, the main difference is you plug it in. And the reason why you have to plug these hybrids in as opposed to a regular hybrid is because you actually have a larger battery. Mm -hmm. So this battery has the capacity to drive itself on just full electric range. So when we are driving a plug-in hybrid, essentially for Kia product, we have about 55 kilometers of fully electric range. You plug it in as you would a regular EV. Although it is important to note that these plug-in hybrids, at least in the Kia and Hyundai world, I think Mitsubishi is the only one that does this, mm -hmm. they do not do DC fast charging. So you would largely be plugging it at home or let's say a shopping mall mm -hmm. where you're utilizing an AC charger. So one of the benefits of this though, if you don't have the opportunity to charge, maybe you don't have a charger at your work or at your home, you still have a hybrid. You still put gas in that car mm -hmm. and it still runs on fuel. So if you're someone who was considering an EV but let the fear of range anxiety scare you off of it, this is the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. You get gas, you get electricity, you can cycle between the two and it, it's smooth. Absolutely. <laughs> so that is going to be some of what the biggest misconceptions and what the biggest difference is, is with hybrid, hybrid electric vehicles, just your regular hybrid, is people think that there is going to be some element of just pure electric range, mm -hmm. when it's always going to be that combination. With plug-in hybrid, a lot of people, what they're going to think is that it is either you're operating on pure electric range or pure gasoline, not a combination of both. Yeah, and it's simply not the case. Once that range is done, the full electric range, you still have a hybrid. One thing I want to ask you, Charlotte, mm -hmm. who may benefit from an HEV or hybrid rather than a plug-in hybrid? That's a great question. So, and I think it's largely going to depend on what your living situation looks like mm -hmm. because the benefits are going to be great. You're still going to get exceptional fuel economy. These vehicles, they typically do tend to be more expensive in price, whether it's a plug-in hybrid or hybrid, with yep. a, hy a plug-in hybrid being a little bit more expensive than a regular hybrid. Uh, but I think a typical regular hybrid is going to be a great choice for someone who may live in an older home, may live in an apartment that they're renting, or a condo where they're not able to put in a charger to plug in their vehicle. Mm -hmm. So depending on what your lifestyle looks like, that might be a great option for you. And I know personally, it's probably what I would lean towards. Mm -hmm. My husband, he has a longer commute um, and he would only, he wouldn't be able to charge his vehicle at work. So he would be able to if he was driving a plug-in, he would be able to drive it on electric range there, but not back. So it might be better to get a combination of both and keep that consistent the whole time. Mm -hmm. But what lifestyle would be better for someone who may be looking for a plug-in hybrid? So we actually have a plug-in hybrid in my family. My mom drives a Sorento PHEV, so that has 55 kilometers of all electric grain, like I mentioned. She also works at a car dealership, and we have a charger here. So she can drive over to work. Her commute's about 35 kilometers mm -hmm. on full EV, plug it in at work, and by the time she's done working, to go back home full EV again. She used to get gas about once a month. Coming from a V6 Sorento before that, she mm -hmm. would be getting gas at least one to two times a week. And the gas tank was like 60 to 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. 
and so, feels real expensive right now. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense for her. Another thing that may contribute to whether you purchase an HEV or a plug-in hybrid is where you live. So here in Canada, we actually have a $5,000 federal rebate towards mm -hmm. the purchase of any vehicle that has over 55 kilometers of range, or I believe it's 54 for the threshold. So essentially, taking it with that discount, it puts you on par with the price of a regular hybrid, so a lot of our consumers feel like mm -hmm. it's worth it to just get the plug-in because even if they don't have a charger at home, chances are they'll be able to find somewhere to charge and capitalize on that extra EV range, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And no matter which vehicle you choose, if you are researching these and you don't feel you're ready for an EV, both of them are going to give you great fuel economy. Generally, you're going to still see a, a comfortable cabin interior. Quiet cabin too. Quiet cabin, quiet ride mm -hmm. as you're used to. Um, but it's not going to give you that range anxiety that you may have if you're making the transition from ICE to pure EV. Yes. So that about sums up our video. If you are curious to know more about this topic, we're actually planning on doing our next podcast episode on plug-in hybrid versus regular hybrid. And with that being said, we just do, we do all kinds of videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to EV tech, car tech, sports cars, all Kia and Hyundai products, we film everything and anything. So be sure to check out our channel. Yeah, so subscribe if you haven't already. And again, go and check out Trunk Talk, which is streaming on all platforms and we'll have our hybrid video posted Sunday 9 a.m. Take care. We'll see you guys see you next there. time. Bye. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs>